All right, so Jenny had shared um, a post about how we had gotten Maggie an iPhone for her 12th birthday, and a lot of people had questions about it. So I just wanted to share what we did and how it can be effective possibly for your kid who's on an AAC device. Um, I'm gonna show you the screen share of what I did to set up her iPhone, um, which was a little bit trickier than I wanted it to be, but um, once I got it working, it's been really, really cool. And then we can talk a little bit about the apps that um, that might work for um, for your kid that Maggie's been enjoying herself. So the um, the key thing is in the accessibility features. If you go into settings, you go into accessibility. There's a switch control. That switch control has head tracking. So if you turn head tracking on and go to the dwell, now, depending on your kid's abilities, um, there might be some other ways that they can actually access uh, some of these things and make it a little bit more specific for them. But for Maggie, dwell is the best way to use it. It's the way her eye gaze computer device works. So I'm gonna turn on dwell. I'm gonna hit, put the tap as what, I want the device to do when she dwells. I'm going to set how big of a cursor it is and how much time she needs in order to um, to activate something. And then we'll go back. Important that tracking mode is set to with face. And then I'm going to go back and I need to add a switch. So I'm going to add a full screen switch so that head tracking is controlling the entire screen and it's going to select an item when it is activated. Um, and then I am also going to go to double tap um, and add a home function. So when I tap the back of the phone as her partner, I can get back to the home screen so she doesn't have to worry about navigating and swiping, which is gonna be pretty complicated for her. I'm gonna make sure scanning style is auto, and then I'm gonna turn on switch control. And that should do it. Um, for me, there was one extra step that it, I needed to do after all that, um, and you might too, where you might have to open the head control menu, which you do by tapping the screen while this switch is on, and letting it scan across so that when it lands on head tracking, you can activate it. Now, the other thing um, to know is that when it's in head tracking, you can't actually tap the phone. So if you triple tap this side button here, um, it'll turn off the switch control so that you can use your partner assistance, however you need to tap around, get to the thing that she needs to access or he needs to access. And then you can triple tap again to turn the switch control back on for them. So that's what I did. I have the triple tap here so I can toggle on and off switch control for my kid. Um, it allows me to assist her the way that she needs help. And then double tap the back so that I can get back to the home screen for her since navigation is a little tricky. So that's basically how you set up the iPhone in order to give them the same functionality as their eye gaze computer devices might. It's pretty cool. I wanna talk a little bit about the apps we found that we can also use for AAC devices. Now, Jenny wrote a blog post about this already and some of the ones that she's found. You can go ahead and uh, check the description in this video if you're here on YouTube or if you found us on the blog or Facebook, um, you can uh, you can check the description or um, on Facebook, you might have to scroll back or search for AAC in the Magnolia's Hope page. Um, one of the main ones that we found that is really, really nice is Vocable, which you actually don't even need to do all the head tracking setup that I talked about previously in order to use this. It's just a super simple uh, communicator that triggers using head tracking. So it gives you easy access to communication on the go 
which can be super functional. And it's all programmable and you can put whatever words or whatever communication you need. There's also different categories. So um, you're not necessarily limited to just the eight options. You can scan across for her or him and give them access to other kinds of uh, communication while you're out and about. Now, some of the other things are Sona Flex Lite, which you will recognize from um, probably your eye gaze. There we go on that. Um, you know, similar program to what is working on your current computer um, eye gaze system or a traditional PEX. And um, that does operate using the head tracking switch. Um, in fact, all the apps will operate using head tracking switch. So any game, anything that you want to use on iPhone will operate using that head tracking switch that exists in the, in the iOS. And what's cool about it is that if I press the message button so she can have access to all of the emojis, she can trigger which emoji she wants to text to her cousin or to her friends or whatever it is. So all that is super cool. There are games also. Now there's there's games that you don't need the head tracking switch, like Sension is a fun one that is just kind of very simple, allows you to move around your head and catch falling feathers. Um, super simple, very easy on the eyes. Now, um, again, any game, any app will operate using that switch in the same way that tapping would. Gets a little complicated if there's multiple buttons, but a lot of those games will have buttons on the screen that you would be able to tap in order to fire a gun or uh, kill a zombie, whatever it is. The other thing I wanted to tell you about was that today, Toby Dynavox released TD Phone. And so what TD Phone is, is an app that you can download directly to your Toby i13 or i16 series, and it will allow you to connect via Bluetooth to your phone. So then when your kid who uses an eye gaze computer triggers something on the eye gaze, on the Toby, uh, that gets sent via Bluetooth to the phone and to whoever is listening on the other line. Um, so it really opens up com communication for them. Uh, it allows you to control your contacts as well. So uh, they'd be able to scan through and find the contact actually dialed directly from the Toby. Same goes with messaging. They can go through and find somebody to message directly through the Toby. And then, um, and then they can type using uh, a keyboard that's in Toby Dynavox to talk about whatever it is they want. And that is with predictive text, so it's not impossible. <laughs> it's not the hardest thing. And I think that it just came out, so it's going to be buggy, and they're going to iterate on it, and it'll get better. Um, for example, right now, I don't think that anything that you trigger in Snap gets automatically typed into a message. I think that it's really kind of voice is the, is the driving use of it right now. But I think as we all talk about it, there's going to be a lot more uses for it and they'll continue to make it better. So those are the things that we found about, out, out about recently. I think it's all really exciting and I'm really happy that A, Maggie wanted the phone and then B, Jenny did the research to go off and find out how it could work and then C, all of these things happened to come together at exactly the time that we got the phone. Um, and uh, I, you know, I, anything that you guys find or that you're working on, go ahead, leave in the comments below and feel free to message us if you have questions. Um, I spent a couple hours on the phone with with Apple Care to make sure that I understood it all. Um, and so hopefully uh, I've made it easy for you guys to understand how you can do it. And again, happy to help if you have any other additional questions. Uh, thank you guys so much for uh, the support and for uh, checking this out. And um, yeah, just go ahead and like Magnolia's Hope over on Facebook. And if you're not subscribed to the blog, it's magnoliashope.com. If you haven't seen the movie yet, we made our documentary, which is on iTunes and Google Play and Amazon. So go ahead and check that out too. 
um, all about our experience with our daughter's diagnosis and how we've kind of progressed from there. And um, I guess that's it. We'll talk to you again soon.